Okay, we're still in the Operating Activities section of the Statement of Cash Flows. Up until now, our changes, the things we've recorded, have stemmed from changes from one year to the next on the balance sheet. But now we're going to address changes to operating activities that come from the income statement. When you look at your income statement, you will always add back depreciation and amortization. Why is that? Because depreciation and amortization are what we call non-cash expenses. We expense them even though no cash changed hands. Your building just got a little bit older. Your truck just got a little bit older. You have a discount or a premium on bonds payable that time passed, so you just write off this expense. But no cash changed hands. These are accrual figures. So we're trying to get from accrual to cash. And to do that, we have to undo these accrual changes that did not affect cash. So we have to add back depreciation and amortization. Also on the income statement, we have to add back losses. Well, the reason we have to add back losses and subtract gains is that they're actually double counted. Losses and gains don't belong in operating activities. So we're taking them out of the operating activities section. They are responsible for a change in stockholders' equity. So we remove these so that we won't double count. Okay, so then we are now done. When you make all these changes, and I hope they're making more sense to you now, you will end up with the cash provided by or used by operating activities. Why do we say provided by or used by? Because provided by means the number was positive. We made more money through our operating activities than we lost. It's a positive number, and that's definitely what you hope to have happen. If you have an operating loss, then you would not say cash provided by operating activities. You would say cash used by operating activities. So you never know which title you're going to use until you come to the result. If it's positive, you say provided by. If it's negative, you say used by. That's why you see that little slash on your cheat sheet. Okay, and that brings us to investing activities. All you see on my cheat sheet is one line plus or minus the change in long-term assets. Well, the change in long-term assets, remember I said assets and cash move opposite as current assets decrease, cash would increase? Well, it's exactly the same for long-term assets. But I'll give one little example. A long-term asset might be your equipment. And in year one, you had $250,000 worth of equipment. Equipment in year two, you had sold some of it, so you only have $100,000 of equipment. Essentially, as your long-term assets went down, you have cash would increase. Why? You sold some. You now have less equipment and more cash in your pocket because you got cash for selling it. So it's as simple as that. Assets and cash are going to move in opposite directions, which now brings us to the very last line for rules, and that is financing activities where you have plus or minus the change in long-term liabilities. Remember, this section is how we pay for our long-term assets, liabilities. Here, we have to subtract. Now, liabilities. Before, didn't I say current liabilities as they increase, cash increases, and vice versa. As, they, as current liabilities decrease, cash decrease. Same with long-term liabilities. So there's no sense beating that to a pulp. We can move on to the next rule, which is plus or minus the change in stockholders' equity. 
Okay, now this one doesn't exactly have a rule that is a pattern. You have to actually think about this. So, if you're looking at stockholders' equity and it went up, we're talking, let's say, common stock in year one and common stock in year two. If I had $100,000 of common stock in year one and it doubled in year two, think about it. Do I have more cash in my pocket or less cash in my pocket? Well, when I sell stock, what do I re receive for it? Money. I have more cash. So is common stock is going to go up, or any kind of stock, preferred stock, whatever, my cash will go up as well. I have more stock, I issued more stock, and I got more money. Now, what else could be in retained, or not retained earnings, but in uh, stockholders' equity? You could have cash in excess of par. Or it could also be called paid-in capital in excess of par. Okay, so let's say in year one, your capital in excess of par was 150000 and in year two, it was 100000 As it goes down, which it did in this case, cash will go down as well. So essentially, you have to think about the equity. It looks like they move together here, but there are situations, but those are pretty rare where it won't. So now, that leaves one little section left over, and that would be dividends. If you notice, it's pretty easy. I have a line there, and I'll just stuff it right up in here. It says minus cash dividends paid. Very important to notice exactly the wording here. There's such a thing as stock dividends where you're paid in stock, not paid in cash. Well, if you're paid in stock, it didn't affect the cash of the company. There is no difference. So it has to be a cash dividend paid out, not a cash dividend declared. It has to be a cash dividend paid for it to actually affect the cash of the company. And that obviously is a negative sign. If you pay a cash dividend, you are going to have less cash in the company. So as cash dividends go up, cash in the company goes down. So there you go. There's the rules to do your statement of cash flows when you're given two years of a balance sheet and an income statement. You can look and see what your statement of cash flows should be like. So, hope this helps. See you in the next video.